Alright, hello and welcome back to the Video Game Noir, the series where we show you the process in repairing and restoring all things gaming. Today, we'll be taking a look at this Sega Genesis Model 2 that I have a nice little post-it note on here that uh, the power LED needs to be replaced and it definitely needs a cleaning. This thing is absolutely filthy. Also, this, uh, this tutorial will be done a little bit differently instead of the heavily scripted thing that that we normally do. We're gonna do more of a live tutorial, no scripting. So if if the commentary is a little meh, that would be why. <laughs> but uh, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and get on to the cleaning and LED repair. So the first order of business whenever it comes to doing any sort of repair on a Sega Genesis, uh, you're gonna need yourself a screwdriver, preferably a Phillips head. Uh, now this one is a little lighter than the Model 2 in terms of screws. You only have your four located here on the corners and then you're pretty much in. That is a luxury that only these classic consoles have because as soon as you start getting in the PS2, Dreamcast, original Xbox era, that's when I guess uh, most of these console manufacturers learned what screws were. <laughs> and. Uh, loaded all their consoles with a whole bunch of tamper-proof screws which was absolutely fantastic and makes servicing them totally not a pain in the butt. So basically this Sega Genesis came as part of a lot that was announced on the live stream we did for the uh what do you call it Alien vs Predator stream we did for Halloween and uh, this came with a NES uh, front loader that was definitely worse for wear and both of these were $20 combined so that's not bad but uh, I did test the system out before I do know that it works the only problem is is that this power LED does not turn on from the looks of it that is a through hole component so that'll be that'll be fun to take out um, but yeah overall for essentially 10 bucks for a, a model 2 sega genesis that's that's not that's not too bad seeing as most of these things are like 40 40 60 bucks nowadays um so once you get the top off basically you're going to have to go around the perimeter and take out some of these screws oh that is great i got some some cat pubes in there that's that's cute obviously not the the worst console that i've seen but definitely a dirty one. I mean, for $10, this is a pretty clean Sega Genesis. I'm surprised the only issue with this one is the fact that, uh, you know, the power LED doesn't work. Uh, whereas, you know, the NES that I would love to show, but it's in pieces <laughs> over there. Uh, that NES is a beast to be reckoned with. I mean, it does work uh, after a lot of uh, cleaning of the cartridge slot. It actually does read cartridges. Just the fact that the shell is so sun damaged that uh, it's like glass <laughs> handling the thing. Again, at least it works. That's the that's the important part of this now, isn't it? No matter how it looks, you can always get replacement shells. Okay. Did I get all the screws? Nope, I was missing this one. But yeah, so we'll do a we'll do a pretty standard cleaning, and then we will. Well, I think we'll replace the LED, and then we'll do a cleaning, and we'll go through that process. Um, hmm, this is uh, definitely a lot dirtier than I thought. Yeah, this uh, this thing is nasty. That is a thick film of cat fuzz and dust. Um, at least it's it passed Q, QC. <laughs> so, uh, basically, when you're in a situation like this, it's best to take like a spare brush and then just kind of brush the board because you can get a lot of this uh, caked on loose dust up and off of the system with that. And then, you know, we'll go in with a little bit of compressed air, but like, see, just that little bit of brushing around the cartridge bay ended up getting this nice little wad of fluff. Uh, it doesn't look like any of these capacitors are leaking. Mm. 
that could be water damage. I'm noticing a little bit of yellow residue uh, right there. I don't know hmm, if that is a capacitor, a compa capacitor fluid or some other liquid that got in here, but we'll wipe it up. But yeah, so if you guys enjoy this kind of less structured approach to some of these OR videos for some of, I guess, the easier things that aren't super in-depth, go ahead and leave a comment down below saying so, and we could definitely work some of these in to the OR instead of everything being, uh, you know, a scripted tutorial. Uh, so let's get the main board out. Uh, to do that, I believe we just have to take out the two screws located here on the cartridge slot. And then we should be able to just pull the motherboard up and out of this. So we'll just quickly, quickly remove those. And always remember that the longer screws on these are for the cartridge slot, shorter screws, heat sink, and then kind of the mid tier between the two, those are the case screws that are on the bottom. Just a little, little key to remember these by. And yep, we are up and out of here. Yeah. So there's the bottom case shell. We'll give that a wash along with the top heat sink. Let me get a, put the board on to avoid any static. And then let's give it another quick little, little brush. Okay, so that's a decent amount of brushing done. So now we're gonna take this little can of compressed air and just quickly give it some. Little spurts just to get uh, most of that gunk off and that can of compressor actually did a pretty damn good job if I do say so myself. So when it comes to cleaning the shell on any console, in this case it's just a Sega Genesis Model 2, a couple things you'll want to do. Uh, first you're going to want to remove this little plastic bar. This is basically just extra support for when you're shoving cartridges in there. So I'll take that off. Then specifically on the model 2 there's this little piece of metal sitting in the back that's for a screw i believe that was supposed to be for the uh what do you call it the the power base converter at least on the model one it was i don't know if it works on the model 2 i don't think it does but maybe there's adapter if i'm wrong leave a comment down below uh so you're gonna want to make sure you take that out so that it doesn't go down the sink uh we're also going to want to remove this heat sink well a piece of rf shielding it's not not really a heat sink. And then that'll give us access to the bare bottom plastic part. Now you can wash uh, the RF shielding. However, if you're doing so, make sure that you wipe it dry pretty soon because if water sits on this stuff, it'll rust. Uh, as you can see, some liquid did get in here because you got some rust spots. And then when it comes to the top part of the Sega Genesis, these power and reset buttons do actually come out. So if you pinch these two little clips together on the side and push, you can pull the power and the reset buttons out of their little holes. That helps in case you have like a like a sticky reset button or your power button's sticky because some kid back in the 90s ended up taking his soda fingers with some Cheeto dust and pushing the buttons on your Sega Genesis. But yeah, uh, so those, those will pop out and if you're having that issue, cleaning this and inside the little tray that they reside in also should fix that problem. We'll just be doing this because it's preventative maintenance and damn, that is disgusting. Uh, now you can remove the cartridge throat if you wanted to. Um, it's just three screws uh, located here and there. And I mean, yet you could take it out. You don't really have to. Uh, you can get a toothbrush in there easily and like, you know, brush out a lot of the gunk, but if you really want to, you could. Uh, I'm not gonna be doing that though in this video because I don't feel like it. But uh, now that all of our plastics are taken apart, we'll put them in a nice little pile and take them over to the sink to get them deep cleaned. All right, so when it comes to cleaning your plastics, there's nothing really too scientific about it. Basically, you just take a old toothbrush that you just had lying around and just like with brushing your teeth, you're going to brush the surface of the console. So we're going to turn on some water, nice lukewarm. Uh, and we're going to use some of this uh, Halloween hoot soap because I just got it lying around. You could also use some Dawn dish soap. That's another alternative that you can use. Uh, but basically, you're just going to want to get all in the nooks and crannies with your toothbrush. 
just to knock loose a lot of that dirt uh dirt and grime that's built up over the past 30 years uh definitely make sure that you hit almost all of the vents that are located here on the top and really give them a good a good uh good bit of you know cleaning cleaning action so to speak uh because these locations on these consoles are the ones that accumulate the dirt the best and it is ultimately the hardest to get it out of there now if you have some really bad streaks or marks on here you could go the GameStop route and use a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser however if you do this on black or on anything shiny you're gonna scuff it up and it's gonna look chalky white and it's disgusting so I would tr try your best to avoid using the <laughs> Mr. Clean Magic Eraser not sponsored on your retro systems because albeit it will get like whatever stain you're trying to get out it'll end up making a stain of its own so we'll just give this a quick little rinse just to see the progress here. I mean, that's pretty good. Now, the thing that I noticed uh, when cleaning systems like this is that it'll look good when it's wet, and then when it dries, a bunch of that dirt re-solidifies in the crevices on the console. So oftentimes you may have to go back in again to do another clean. And right now there's something leaking out of this that's orange. I'm guessing it's some crap that was stuck in these cartridge ports. Now, don't be afraid to add more soap, especially when you're when you're doing stuff like this, because sometimes, you know, like one little pump of soap is not enough. Um, if I can get another pump out of here. OK, so I will just keep on scrubbing this and then we will check back if there's anything else that I have to say or, you know, when we're at the end, we'll just We'll just montage it up. Yeah, look at that. Nastiness. The soap is turning yellow. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but that is gross. Now, when you're done with, like, a thing and you got it all nice and wet like this, it's best practice to let it air dry. I mean, you could hit it with a blow dryer to try to get it to, you know, dry a little quicker. But then if you sit on one spot in here for too long, the plastic will warp. So it's best just to let these air dry out, but to expedite the process a bit, like if it's super wet, like what I had here, you can take a, take a spare cloth and just wipe some of that excess water off. And then that'll also help you kind of gauge where uh, you might need to hit it again with a little bit of uh, cleanage action. Um, I mean, this piece, this piece looks pretty good, so we'll set this aside, let it air dry, and uh, shift our attention to the rest of this Model 2. Okay, so when it comes to... When it comes to any part that has stickers on it, in this case, the bottom of the Sega Genesis, you're not gonna wanna submerge this in water, especially soapy water, because if you do, these stickers will start to peel up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly do a rinse and a quick little spot clean with our toothbrush to try to get rid of a lot of the debris. And then we'll immediately wipe it off with our rag and then continue on. All right, give it a quick shake. And then we will wipe it down with our rag real quick just to get most of the water off. So basically, once uh, once you're all done with that, you're going to want to take your parts and line them out to dry for probably the next 24-ish hours or until, you know, you don't see huge globs of water sitting around. Uh, and in the meantime, while we're waiting for this to dry, we'll turn our attention over to that LED and see if we can't get that swapped out. So when it comes to circumstances like this, where you're trying to replace an LED in a console, whether it's burned out or, you know, it's um, a cosmetic thing you want to do, you're going to want a three millimeter LED. Now, I happen to already have diffused red ones. Uh, diffused basically means that it's got a colored tint to it instead of it being, you know, clear. Uh, from a bunch of PKD blasters that I was I was making so we'll be able to replace this with one that looks similar to stock and then when you're looking at the top of the board in this circumstance it's actually marked so the when you see this little icon this is basically the the diagram for an LED when 
to know which leg you're supposed to put it in, uh, basically the shorter leg of the LED, aka the cathode, should be towards this minus sign on the LED thing. So we're going to want to put the cathode in the left hole and the anode, which is the longer pin, into the right hole. So let's just flip her over, get the soldering iron up and running, and uh, we'll get to desoldering. So the LED legs are these two right here. We're gonna wanna flush the point with some fresh solder, and then use some desoldering braid to try to wick it up. Now, this process can be kind of a pain in the butt when you're using uh, desoldering braid on through hole components, but it is completely doable. Uh, a thing that also helps is if you grab some flux, and if you want to flux the point beforehand or not because your flux pen is broken, so that's just cute. All right, come on, there we go. Yeah, you want to flux up your, your point and then add a little bit of flux to your desoldering braid, and that will just help things adhere a whole lot better. So to do this, we're going to want to take the soldering iron, put a little bit of solder on the tip, and then lie our desoldering wick right on top, put the soldering iron next to it, and suck up hopefully most of that solder, which it looks like it did. So that's cool. And then we'll just move right over to the next one. Hopefully wick all that up. And yeah, that was pretty good. So to test to see if we can get that LED out, we'll just flip the board back over, give it a little wiggle. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, well, I guess we can see why the uh, the LED wasn't working. I went to pull it out and uh, it appears that it exploded at some point. So that's um that's a new one. I'll grab a pair of tweezers to hopefully pull out this other leg. Just give it a little bit of a wiggle. There we go. Okay, um, well, yeah, that, uh, that explains a lot. So as, as, uh, as labeled before, we're going to want to put the longer leg into the rightmost hole. We'll just push it all the way through. And then to hold this component in place while we do our soldering, you can just kind of bend the legs a little bit. Any direction, generally opposite is better. And then we'll just go ahead and grab our soldering iron again. Now, I like to solder on the ripe temperature of 369 degrees Celsius. Um, not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but uh, yeah, actually, I think I can check if I... Okay, apparently I can't. Uh, I thought my soldering iron had the option to switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit, but I guess not. So uh, anyway, <laughs> now that we got that soldered in, really only takes a couple seconds, uh, not that hard at all. Uh, we'll take a pair of flush cutters and then we'll just cut the excess leads off and there you go. We have now successfully fixed that power LED. All right, so that should be just about it for all the soldering required on this because the board works otherwise. If you wanted to, you could go by and replace the capacitors that are here on the board, but these all look fine, no bulging, no leaks. Um, so we're gonna put the soldering iron away. Now, if you guys are new to soldering, uh, generally what you wanna do is when you're finished using your soldering iron, is you take a little bit of solder, you put it on the end of the tip, and then you turn it off with this little blob of solder on the end. And what that does is protect the tip from, you know, oxidation and whatnot, and generally will make your tips last a lot longer. But in terms of dealing with this motherboard, I believe everything should be good to go. So we will just go and wait until the case shell cleans. Cleans. We'll just wait until the case shell's done drying, and then we'll put it back together. All right, so it is now officially the next day and our Sega Genesis shell parts are all completely dry. So uh, with that, we'll just start moving on to the reassembly. So first things first, you're gonna wanna take your top shell of your Genesis and then your power and reset buttons. Uh, power is going to go on the left side of the shell and reset will go on the right side. Should pop right into place. Then uh, with that, we'll pretty much set the, the top shell to the side because there's nothing else we can do. 
with it for the time being. So we'll shift our attention over to the bottom half of the shell. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that the controller ports are towards the front facing you. And then you'll wanna grab your bottom piece of RF shielding. Uh, make sure that the side with the two little square notches goes towards the front. Should rest perfectly in there. Uh, then you wanna grab your weird looking M a uh, piece of metal that I'm guessing was for locking in an accessory that may not have even came out for the Genesis. And then we'll want to grab our refurbished motherboard. Slop that on top of that. Correction, I have forgot a key piece. You grab this little cartridge spacer first. Uh, make sure the side that has like the little uh, concaved parts goes face down. That'll go on these two little two little nubs. Then you put the motherboard on there. Fits like a glove. And uh, we will follow it up by grabbing our two longer screws and inserting them into both sides of the cartridge slot and securing them in so that that cartridge slot has no means of uh, coming out of here. Uh, so then after you have the top shell in there, or the, the motherboard partially secured in there. Uh, we're going to want to grab the top piece of RF shielding. That's the one with the weird cartridge thing. This this little lug here obviously goes over the cartridge slot, so we'll just slop that on there. If everything wants to align properly. There we go. And then we'll take our plethora of smaller screws. I think we have, let's see, six, seven, nine in total and we'll just work our way around the perimeter to secure the motherboard in all right so now that we have the main board and top our shielding in there we'll grab our top shell for the genesis and just slot that on top like that um the model two is different in terms of the model one because the model one had a slide switch here for the power so you had to make sure that the uh the hole in the switch part actually lined up to the hole that's on the the, the actual switch on the motherboard uh with this one it's just a, a push button thing so as long as we get it you know in the ballpark of the hole we should be good uh yeah reset seems to be working power seems to be working so that's all good. Uh, so now that we got the top shell on there, we'll flip it over and we'll reinsert the bottom case screws and then we should be good with this Genesis. So we'll move on to inserting our six level, our four level case screws in the bottom and then that'll just about wrap up the, the cleaning and, you know, power LED adjustment on this Sega Genesis Model 2. Overall, it's a super easy thing. If you if you have your old Genesis lying around, either this a Model One. I mean, hell, it could even be like an N64. It's super easy. You just use a standard screwdriver, take the thing apart, wash the plastics as if you're you know brushing your teeth, and then um, let it dry and reassemble it. It's not that hard. Of course, this Model Two had a little more of a of an adjustment, being that you know we needed to change the power LED because for some reason it looked like it exploded and I have never seen that before in a console and that is great. E even if you wanted to, you know, um, or modify the power LED, like make it blue or a multicolor flash thing or whatever, you could do that as well. It doesn't have to just be replacing stock and it doesn't have to be that, you know, um, the stock one is broken. All right, now to test our lovely uh, refurbished Sega Genesis, I got it rigged up here. I stole the uh, the cables from the 32X, but we'll go ahead and we'll pop in the game, make sure that it still reads it. Um, if right off the bat, we got a good start. We got the red LED, and if we look down here, we do have gameplay. So this was indeed a successful refurbishment. So if you enjoyed this style of content and would want to see more videos like it, be sure to leave a like and say a few words down below for a chance to have your comment featured in a future episode. And while you're down there, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any new episodes of Video Game OR. And with that, I will see you in the next one.